Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Today we have the executive director of Deco Oil, Lincoln Moore, with us. Uh, Deco Oil is a large-scale oil palm production operation located on the Ivory Coast, and uh, the company is listed on the A market. Uh, morning, Lincoln. How are you? Good morning, Rob. Very well, thank you. It's good to hear. Um, you recently published your third quarter production and sales update. So the question I got to start with is, how is the third quarter in 2018 compared to the third quarter in 2017? And uh, what's caused the difference? Yeah, just taking a step back, I guess the, the main thing I think us and, and shareholders were looking at was uh, for the signs of a recovery. Obviously, the, the first half through the high season was pretty challenging in terms of uh, local yields of fresh food bunches. And I think... It's pleasing. I think these results uh, indicate what we expect to be the case, that that is behind us. Uh, in terms of volumes themselves, the main one we, we of course, look at is our fresh fruit bunch volumes, which were up 15% uh, compared to last year. So that does seem to support the case that the the, the drops that we saw in Q1 and Q2 uh, seem to be subsiding. We're moving back to more normalised uh, conditions. So so stronger than the, the same quarter last year, which... You know, it was a pretty weak quarter last year. It is a low season period, so any sort of small small uh, adjustments uh, show quite a lot of volatility in terms of the percentages. But uh, to have fresh fruit bunches up 15% and CPO up 13% uh, is a very good sign and uh, indicates what we believe to be the case that next year will be stronger. Um, you know, the, the PCO actually was also quite strong, albeit the um, the production increase was slightly slightly lower. And the, and the reason for that is last year, because of the, the milling interruptions, we processed more kernels in Q3 than we would have uh, would have otherwise done. Uh, but again, we you know we've continued to buy kernels in the market to keep uh, Pico sales as, and production and sales as strong as possible. So you know in terms of production uh, you know, quite a strong, quite a strong quarter. In terms of pricing, clearly something obviously very, uh, very challenging. Um, international markets for palm oil at probably ten year lows. I think you know we we are probably better placed than most to deal with it because of the flexibility in our cost base. In that our fruit uh, costs typically typically adjust downwards as well. So that that gives us some advantage, but uh, nevertheless, uh, weaker prices, obviously, uh, environments obviously being quite challenging. Well, the rebound in uh, Q3 seems positive for the company. Um, are the increased yield and production levels expected to continue into 2009's harvests? And uh, if that's the case, how have you prepared for the increased production required? Yeah, see, the expectation uh, amongst all the local technical agronomists is that we that we should have a quite a, a good high season uh, next year, and we've t- spoken about this a number of times, and and nothing's changed. And I guess uh, we're now seeing some evidence, obviously, with this normalisation that um, we're at least going back to normal levels, and and you know we're certainly very optimistic of a of a stronger uh, high season. Um, you know, in terms of preparation, of course, you know we, we've been we prepared for a strong high season last year, and, and the two notable investments were the the second boiler uh, to to mitigate any milling disruption during peak periods, and also uh, increasing our mills capacity from 60 ton to 75 tons, which allows us to to take advantage of you know heavy flows of fruit which happen uh, during the high season. In terms of in terms of this year, this year with all those points in cases, there's a little less. To do, but uh, the you know obviously with uh, ongoing maintenance program, but we have our heavy maintenance program which takes place uh, during October and November, which you know allows us to be uh, in, a, in a good position and ensure that we don't have any milling interruptions should the fruit, as we expect, increase some um, drastically early next year. And uh, the, the results show the average CPO price per ton uh, was down 17%, and the CPO sales down with 24% in Q3. What caused this drop? Yeah, this is, uh, I guess, uh, international issues rather than than local issues. The international palm oil price, as I mentioned, is is at ten year lows. Um, you know, caused by by I've mentioned previously a number of times. You know, issues affecting um, supply levels due to a lot of a lot of trade um, country trade issues. Uh, India, I've mentioned, has had an increase its tariffs on palm oil, and there's the ongoing U.S. A, uh, China um, issues in terms of uh, which will affect soya um, sales from from U.S. to to China, which 
there's any increase in, in stockpile piles of soya, which is a substitute for palm, then the both tend to be tend to be affected. So it's you know it, it, what what we're hearing from a number of groups is it feels like it's at the the really low level. We're in the middle of the Southeast Asian high season period, which also increases to supply levels. Uh, and then they'll be coming out of high season in the next couple of months. And we you know typically, if you're looking at the futures markets, for example, you see palm oil prices moving back um, at least north of uh, six hundred dollars. Uh, we see you know another uh, number of other factors in play. I think you know oil prices have kept uh, creeping up. I think they hit eighty five dollars a barrel. These are crude crude mineral oil prices. Um, so this is. This is one we're watching quite closely. If, if, if oil continues to rise, then of course Indonesia and Malaysia, the main producers of palm oil, will start to to use more palm oil as feedstock for their for their bio biodiesel. So, so the the prevailing view also REA as well is another one of our contemporaries on AIM have indicated they're expecting stronger prices ahead. So, you know, it's it difficult to always predict, but um, there, there's there's probably more reason to be optimistic on prices going up than any further down. Downwards. Okay, and uh, for the shareholders, uh, can you let them know what actions have been taken throughout 2018 that uh, have reduced the impact of the poor harvest? Yeah, so I think we we touched in our results at half year that we'd um, you know, implemented a few cost cutting measures. We've uh, trimmed um, some costs uh, relating to our. Uh, external transportation uh, contracts. These are the the contracts that uh, we outsource to bring fruit from the the various logistics centres uh, to the mill and a number of other uh, internal costs. But uh, I think we you know we we've also mentioned that we we tend to run a reasonably tight ship anyway, so that those won't um, be tre- tremendously drastic, but but um, but are helpful uh, in terms of the the other side of the coin. You know we continue to buy kernels in the market outside the kernels that we uh, produce from our fresh fruit bunches, which is um, keeping uh, PKO production um, at reasonably high levels and it's been a strong, strong year for PKO production. Uh, and, and we're doing, um, you know, we're doing uh, deals on a pricing of our CPO. So, I mean, the, the indirect, I guess, uh, lack of a better word, benefit of, of lower levels of crude palm oil in the market uh, caused by the weaker high season is there. Is, is that we can now um, extract some premiums on the pricing and and uh, in Q3 as um, you know the low season of CPO has come through we we've been able to uh, increase um, and increase prices uh, slightly and that should continue I suspect into Q4 so uh, particularly our crude palm oil price is there's a lot less you can do on on palm kernel oil it's a it's a very really, relatively small local market but the the crude palm oil, we're certainly getting a, a premium at the moment, which is obviously helping to offset the the weaker production and uh, harvest levels. Good to hear. And uh, on a separate uh, subject to the results, um, can you tell us a bit more about the development plans for the cashew processing plant in Tia Pasu? Yeah, well, I think we this one, uh, the, really what I guess investors can, can expect uh, in the next uh, little while, very, I mean, I'd say imminently in the next couple, couple of weeks is is uh, announcements relating to the decision on where we're going with the, the mill contract and the, the local infrastructure uh, contracts, which really are the two, two key contracts in place before we press the button and, and start the construction phase of the project that they're, they're imminent uh, in my view. Uh, and then, you know, we, we remain, I think, on track to to deliver a um, processing plant uh, by the end of Q4 uh, next year is the plan. It's uh, it's uh, you know quite a think quite an exciting exciting project, which I don't think at you know this early stage and investors have probably turned their their heads around what this could be could be worth to us, but it's um, significantly material. So we're, we're anxious to to get started. Uh, on that and, and cashew markets in general in terms of pricing remain buoyant and the, the local production of cashews in terms of the, the raw cashew nuts is it was strong this year. So so we, we think we're entering a, a nice market at a good time. And plenty to keep you busy as well. Um, how about the uh, development plans for Gucci? How are they progressing? And uh, is there any other news regarding a financial partner? Advancing, I, I can say that uh, since we last spoke, that uh, we're closer to 
to formulating a solution here. Um, it, it probably not as as it won't, probably won't be as quick as the uh, commencement of the construction phase of the cashew, but it is it is uh, progressing in the background and uh, and you know that project uh, looks like it's um, moving towards a green light situation, which is fantastic. And and I think you know you know we're soon be in a period where we have our three projects, which um, you know are all going to be uh, interesting at different um, stages of development and. You know, I think it's. I think uh, with all the doom and gloom in external stock markets, and obviously we've had the double whammy of not just external stock markets, but obviously a challenging year uh, in terms of the the main things that affect our business, both the the crude oil pricing and and uh, the local production. I think there's a strong reason to be optimistic that that um, the business is in um, good shape and and uh, got a lot of a uh, lot of a lot to look forward to. Well. Thank you, uh, Lincoln. It's it's always been a, a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, hopefully, yeah, we'll hear some more uh, in the next few months. Uh, fantastic, Rob. Pleasure. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.